welcome to the panel. And I have already introduced myself, so I would like, I would request you all to introduce yourself. So maybe, Shalini, you can start. Hi, uh, I'm Shalini, and um, I am a part of the SMS industry. I've been in the SMS industry for been more five years now, and I work with PCCW Globe, mostly into SMS solutions. Hello. Yeah, my name is Shikha. I'm uh, from Airtel, vice president of roaming and mobile solutions. Been with Airtel for 20 years. 25 years small experience. So uh, happy to be in the panel. Thanks for inviting me here. Hello, everyone. I'm Kunal. I'm the Assistant General Manager at Tech Labs, and I take care of the anti fraud and firewall deployments across various telcos and trying to save their network as much as possible from any kind of frauds. Happy to be here. Be here. Hi, everyone. Good morning and very warm welcome to Mumbai. Uh, I'm Nayan Paranjpe. Part of Telin since last one year, but overall 15 plus years of experience in the telecom industry. And I am I'm VP uh, of Digital Marketplace Enabler at Telin. I take care of New Traffic's platform. Uh, it is a global connectivity exchange for voice, SMS, and virtual numbers. And uh, ha happy to be here. Thanks to GTS and MEF for having us here. Hello. My name is Alexei. I'm the managing director of Blank Telecom, a voice carrier, SMS aggregator, and SC pass player. Hello. Save the best for last. I am uh, Himanshu, the tallest guy in Indian telecom industry. <laughs> so been around for 15 plus years, started my career with voice, uh, moved on to data, uh, now managing mobile as well as uh, security portfolio in Orange for the last six years. Looking forward to the rest of the day. Thank you, thank you everyone for the lovely introduction. Maybe we can begin with the panel now, and because people out there are eager to listen from us and what are the insights from this market, right? So, um, as I said, the panel discussion is about messaging security and anti-fraud. So here's the first question I would like to throw to the panelists is like, how trusted today are the various messaging channels? So maybe I think, Alexi, if you would like to add something to this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so speaking about the business messaging, it's been uh, going through the challenges during the last years since there's been always the most, I would say, which is still one of the most reliable and uh, uh, convenient way of business uh, messaging, which is SMS. But though uh, there are a few factors such as fraud and the general market uh, pricing increase, there's two main factors that actually forced the brands and the enterprises to look for the alternatives, ways of uh, authentication and actually communication with, uh, with uh, consumers. And uh, this has been really developing a lot during the last years. And uh, there are various, various communication channels. Some of them are traditional ones, some of them are new ones. Uh, the main ones, I would say, are still email, and uh, which is which is still there, uh, SMS. Traditional A2P is also the main one, right? Yeah, yeah. Traditional A2P SMS is still there, mm -hmm. though there are the uh, challenges that we'll probably discuss later on. Correct. As well, more and more brands are trying to move communication uh, into the apps, Correct. like, like uh, all kind of pushes and uh, the uh, OTP. O OTPs, of course, uh, is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, and uh, the new ones, like the RCS, is there. They're probably not at the at the level uh, a lot of a lot of people are were expecting it to be. But uh, it's going on. There is still a lot of a lot of focus for the RCS on the market. Uh, voice is is growing up. Though, uh, as well, there are challenges and there are difficulties and there are uh, certain resistance, uh, an understandable resistance from the, from the mobile operators. But I would say the 
brands are quite insistent uh, on on finding alternatives, which would be which would be more uh, protected and uh, more efficient cost-wise. Okay. This is the situation that is uh, that is going on. Yeah. So the new one, I'll say, like RCS, in-app messages. These are the various channels which are coming up, like already there in the market. Yeah, absolutely. Then the uh, the emails are still there. Let's not forget about that. And it is yes. actually the uh, I'll say the share is surprisingly growing. Correct. Correct. So with this, like there are many threats coming in, right? So. Maybe the next one is like, what are the key threats destabilizing the market, and how do we combat them? So, being from the operator background, Shika, it would be good to hear from you. Yeah. So I would not call it a threat per se. What uh, is happening? There are different messaging channels. SMS being the most prevalently used, but the larger problem which we are seeing is that lack of trust, which is creeping in because traditionally the communication channel, whether it be SMS or the new uh, channels like WhatsApp, Viber, any OTD messaging, the objective of it was for an enterprise to reach the end consumer. Correct. But it's not possible. The best way to, on the safest uh, way is to, if they're directly reaching out through, a, say, a telecom channel, if it's SMS, or through the OTD directly. But looking at the number of countries and the number of operators, it's not possible for an enterprise to reach out directly. So they use third parties. Correct. So the problem arises when we have more third parties, and uh, the challenge is the trust factor right now, because I, I break it into two parts. One is the consumer who's actually the recipient of the message, and the, and the enterprise who's actually sending the message to its user. Correct. So as a user, all of us are consumers, right? Yes. So we receive messages, but we want to receive messages which we opted in for. Right. So looking at uh, that situation, if I'm receiving messages that I never asked for, I'm giving my you should give the number, I'm giving my number to the brand which I trust. Correct. But I get messages from a lot of others, which are not required by me. Why would my message, my, why, would, why is my number even available with them is the first yeah. question. So that's one thing. So this is being used for first of a spam, then you have phishing messages, then you have a lot of uh, fraud which is happening. Correct. People are being duped to, to reveal their Actual personal identity. They're being sending links to create you know, a situation where their money is taken out from the Financial bank. frauds. Yeah, financial yeah. frauds. Safety is an issue. I mean, if you look at women, you get, you don't know, you don't see the person. If you look at the OTT apps, if you have your photograph, it can be misused, right? So safety is a concern, spamming is a concern. But from an enterprise perspective, their objective was, okay, my customer is getting onboarded. I want to communicate something to them. They are sending messages, it is not reaching the end user. Where is that message going? Correct. If it is reaching, it is actually not what they sent. It Correct. is manipulated. Their name is being misused by someone else to send fraud messages, right? Correct. In other way, now it's the last new problem is artificial generation. Correct. Because they are paying for the messages, somebody is generating more messages by using some technology. This, these kind of things are destabilizing they are the market. So Correct. Yeah. The channel will not go away. Business messaging is not going to go away. There are alternate channels. They also face the same problem. This problem is not for SMS. This problem is even for WhatsApp even for RCS or any other channel. Correct. Like two days ago, I received a message. You want to do a part-time job. I mean, the message is coming from Mumbai. I'm from Mumbai, and the number is of Iran, <laughs> right? So there are different yeah, the So property messages. The moment you stop at one source, it finds another source. Correct. So the, the person who's actually giving that technology has to then see how, what, how they can protect it. But the more and more third parties you will have, the chances of this is getting going to be yeah. still there. You so basically, really eradicate. yeah, building that trust is really important. Building the trust on the channel of the message is very important. Yes. But then how do we combat these kind of threats? Like Shalini, if you can add some perspective to this. As um, Ashika mentioned that, you know, there are multiple modes of communication that is happening. It's not only on SMS, it's spreading on WhatsApp, Viber. Now, we also need to look at another aspect that, you know, why is it that this fraud is increasing to such a large extent? One of the factors is also the pricing, the commercial models Correct. that we have today. The pricing initially when A2P started some years ago, the pricing was way lower, especially I'm talking from an international A2P perspective. Correct. Pricing was much lower and it was an easy medium for enterprise, for brands to communicate, communicate to their customers. To 
Uh, yes, at that point as well, there would be a lot of thrashing that would happen. But the percentage of thrashing, when we see, would be much lesser. Got it. Because the pricing was not that high. That was a price that could be absorbed by the brand, by the OTT, right. and even by the middle players right. who would actually terminate that traffic. Today, the pricing at even at the MNO's end, because even the MNO realizes the revenue that it gains from this termination, which has become an added uh, value stream for the MNO as well, for an A2P business. So then the pricings have increased. So and pricing factor should be from the MNO perspective, like they that, should be looking more that into also it. Also has right? to be looked at because uh, an OTT brand may not be willing. Like you have some markets where I'm, I'm specifically talking from an international A2P perspective, a pricing which used to be at four cents today has gone to 21 and 25 cents. Mm -hmm. We have OTPs who are not willing to pay that price. Right. But do you really think only the commercial models will help to uh, it gain has the to, No. No. You have to have a blended uh, opportunity looking at it. There has to be a commercial model as well as some kind of solutions, which could be your firewall solutions, which could be your authentication, which could be multiple layers of security that you built in, where this yeah. traffic does not go away and, you know, the objective of the entire solution should be that the traffic of A to B should not go into other modes of. Right. So revenue. in terms of commercial modeling is one. And second, you said as a technology. So maybe Kunal being coming from the technology background, how will you see that threats will be minimized or trust will be gained? Yeah. So uh, on the technology side, uh, so let's say when we are talking about messaging, the whole ecosystem of messaging, we have various stakeholders. Uh, we have the originators who are the enterprises, we have aggregators, and at the end we have telcos who are actually touching the customer, they're at the end point. So on a technology per se, uh, it, is, uh, it, it should be a very collaborative approach between all the stakeholders of this industry to protect uh, the industry they are working on. Uh, as in the technology, uh, the enterprises must have a criteria of selecting the right aggregator who has the knowledge of fraud management or has some system of at least reporting if there is any kind of fraud. Correct. Similarly, when it comes to aggregator, aggregator being a person, they uh, switch a lot of traffic internationally, even domestically. Uh, they must have some kind of a technology mechanism, if not to block, at least report or do something about it, put it in a quarantine mode for you know later termination of the SMSs. But the most important stakeholder over here is the telco themselves, who are the persons who are actually touching the customer. Uh, it is important that they are equipped with the latest technologically advanced anti-fraud systems with, with you know, all the algorithms we have of today, AI, ML. And uh, with the active blocking, they must select the right partner who not only provides the technology, but also knows how to run the technology a partner who has visibility on the frauds which are happening globally so that they can protect the network beforehand, even, uh, even before the frauds try to enter the network. So I believe it, it is a collaborative approach between all the stakeholders of the industry to correctly tackle this problem. This will help you to gain the trust of the consumers, I believe. Absolutely, absolutely. So apart from this technology side, uh, it is, uh, we see that there are a lot of initiatives from the government and the telcos within India itself. Uh, there are continuous ways where a consumer is updated about the latest fraud trends that is happening and how a consumer should be protected Correct. from those frauds. So like not clicking to any URLs, not sharing OTPs. Even if there are fraud cases, uh, it is actively reported in the media houses so that people are aware of what's happening. Governments are taking measures, but they should be more equipped and more advanced in terms of spreading the awareness, I believe. So to combat the threats, maybe I'll say like commercial modeling is one aspect and the technology advancement is the other aspect we should be looking and at. And collaboration is the third the one. Collaboration in the entire ecosystem of the messaging business. Absolutely. So, uh, like, what really needs to be done to improve the trust to bring messaging to the new markets? Like, how will you put your point, Alexi, Himanshu, like, if you can? Yeah, so, uh, to bring the, uh, excuse me, to you. So, so what really needs to be done to improve the trust to bring messaging to yeah. the new markets? Absolutely. Unserved market or untouched markets, yeah. Yeah, so uh, there is a lot to be done, actually. <laughs> and uh, I fully agree that there are commercial models that needs to be revised. I fully agree that there, are, uh, uh, there should be more done on the technology side. 
in the way of uh, building the trust to the to the providers, in the way of detecting uh, uh, detecting the fraudulent activity, making the channels more uh, more secure. Uh, but I believe that there is as well a lot to be done on the regulators side mm -hmm. as well which is a which is a very serious topic and I believe uh, as well if we look at the let's say types of fraud in the messaging then you have the ones uh, like uh, traditional ones like smishing uh, CLI spoofing and those ones that uh, there are systems there that can actually detect it and they are quite regulated by the agreements between the aggregators, between the brands. But there is as well uh, the new, uh, like not the new, but uh, the types of fraud that became, uh, that have that been seriously growing through the last yeah, but, of but years. When you are talking about the new markets, which, which are unserved markets, so I believe there will be the limitations of regulations. Regulations are not predefined or not very well defined. Even operators are not well equipped in such new markets in some parts of Africa or the Oceania region? No, absolutely, but this is one of the things I'm, uh, I'm trying to get to. There, there should be like a global regulation and there should be uh, certain, uh, uh, certain ways that uh, a combined effort or joint effort to, uh, to fight the, as well the uh, types of, uh, uh, one of the biggest threats yeah, is an artificially inflated uh, right. uh, traffic. Yeah, maybe Himanshu would like to add something, yeah. Okay. Yeah, in fact, I just wanted to touch upon one uh, practical point of discussion, which we, in fact, spoke about at the party last night as well. Uh, taking the example of Oceania, a small island like Nui, with maybe a few hundred thousand people or even less than that, yeah. the users were just relying on uh, one-step authentication, which was only email. They didn't even know that uh, uh, authentication passwords existed. And now with people like, for example, GTS entering and giving that second uh, factor of security to them, so it's very important in that case to reach out to new markets. There's a lot of, uh, of course, security concerns out there. And it's, it's good to have an approach to, to reach out to these untapped areas Correct. and to securize uh, their overall network. Correct. So, so great job to GTS, by the way, on the, the new e acquisition. Thank you. Thank you. So this is, this is the awareness which we are spreading, basically. Like, not only targeting the big ones, because of course India is such a big market as James already mentioned, it's 18% of the entire world. But we should also focus on the small pockets of the world where people are living and you know, they are relying on partners like us to uh, get the reach towards them and have the availability of all the knowledge across the globe, whatever is available. Good, so um, what are some emerging trends and challenges in the field of messaging security and anti-fraud? So anyone like Kunal would like to take it up now and whatever. Uh, well, talking about the emerging trends, when we talk specifically about messaging, uh, we should not, uh, we actually, a lot of mistake, many times mistakenly, we just select one channel of uh, a traditional messaging way. But, uh, you know, every year we talk about that A2P is growing in double digits. But what about the OTTs which are going in triple digits? Correct. Okay, OTT again, a messaging application. Uh, these applications, uh, the application owners, when I say, uh, they have recently started doing messaging as a service to many of the consumers. But SMS being one of the oldest channel, uh, there has been quite an awareness about the need of the anti-fraud, the SMS firewalls, and frauds related to the messaging on the traditional channel. But what about the OTTs? Uh, we see that there is a lot of encryption going on and there is limited access to the uh, data of messaging, especially the metadata of the messaging, which is a key factor to detect or uh, define a particular message as a fraud or not. So such kind of hindrance in the data of the traffic is a biggest technological challenge which I see as of now. And this is where, again, I would push to the same point of collaboration which is very important between all the stakeholders. Correct, correct. Good, good. I think that's very ecosystem managed well with all the touch points. That way maybe we can combat the things. So Another trend, Pallavi, that uh, specific to international A2Ps, uh, which is a bit worrying now, uh, is also the kind of growth that, uh, that the aggregators and the firewall providers, etc., are seeing, and the hunger for growth that has propelled. 
uh, which leads to some uh, worrying trends like traffic generation or artificial inflation of markets, which eventually could uh, end up you know, shooting ourselves on the foot and we could uh, encourage the OTTs to move on to different channels rather than come to uh, A to B messaging. Correct. So while we are chasing growth, that's great, but we also need to be mindful of keeping the industry alive and thriving for longer. Correct. Shika would like to add something. I just wanted to talk, see we're talking more of international, but the larger market is domestic. Correct. So the commercial model, I understand for the international part is uh, important, but I think the, the biggest uh, consumption of messaging as a channel is more on the local brands. So we, we spoke about regulation. You can really regulate the telecom operators. I haven't seen any regulation coming on the OTT channels. Correct. So the example I gave you, you in India we all know, you, the UCC regulation was there to stop scam the unsolicited messages. We were successful to an extent, but what happened? What happened? The messages, spam moved to mobile numbers. So right. you see SIM farms coming up. Right. You stop SIM farms, something else comes up. So now it's, it's moved to DLT now, right? right? So the question is, international, I understand most of us are from the international side, but the larger problem to solve, I think, is domestic. domestic side. Commercial might not be the right approach there. Uh, we need technology. We have deployed blockchain, which is the largest deployment and the first deployment across the globe Correct. to control this menace. But it hasn't succeeded that well because uh, there are reasons why it's not. Yeah. The technology itself will never be successful. You have to have a lot of strong processes along with that. Correct. There has to be a strong intervention from the regulator. There has to be penalties for people who are actually creating scam or fraud out of those. So this DLT platform has been implemented in India. So before DLT and after DLT, what are the changes you see from the domestic market? See, DLT, before DLT, yes, there were limited, there was firewall too. You did not know what was going in. So okay. in DLT, what has happened is there is an enterprise which registers, there's a template registration, sender registration. But when they were registering those templates, I think there was not enough guidance available, so nobody knew what's going to come up. So there are so many templates with variables. There are millions of templates which have been created which are never going to be used. Okay. Now if you see recently the government has come out, okay, clean up the templates. Okay. Put, why should there be so many variables? Principal entities should be you know, penalized. The telemarketers should be penalized. So those are the things which they are bringing because they are seeing it as being misused. Correct. Right? So many frauds are happening. Frauds are happening from SIM farms, the banking applications. In fact, recently it, it has been increased. Yeah, it, it has, has increased, increased actually. Yeah. So you've actually, we say you've automated fraud now. Right. The blockchain, right. which actually right. automated because you've registered the templates, template and, and the data is accessed because principal entities are not doing it themselves. Correct. They're outsourcing that activity to someone and they have access to all the templates. Correct. Right? So a message. If we talk about international, which you were talking about, the message from an international app is coming through DLT from some other name. Other name, right. The OTP is there, so it is You OTP can just put there. the OTP, yeah. yeah Even if it is from Facebook, it will just... God, right? Correct. Yeah. So when you talk about trust, there is where the trust is lost. Correct. So as an enterprise, there is a channel available, so it's a commercial model for international, but what happens in domestic? Domestic market. Domestic, right. the same fight. There is a price a telco is charging. There's a price which the uh, aggregators Aggregator, are charging. Correct. There is definitely something going on. So many things happen. Right, right. So it's a question of how do we build that trust back. So, so as an industry, we all, I, I totally agree with what he said, that we have to collaborate. Correct. And together we have to, uh, you know, address the end consumer has to be safe. So my next so question is the same. Like, what role do industry standards and regulations play in combating this messaging fraud? Domestic, international, both. Domestic is major key, I'll say, because the pie is very big. Mm -hmm. So what should be the industry standards or the Knowledge regulation? Sharing, see, you can't really have the same regulation across the globe. Correct. Knowledge sharing is very important. So if you talk about, if I take an example of GSMA, so you can share or MEF. MEF for that matter. Thanks to James. You can have a long a share, sharing of, you know, knowledge amongst operators, but that's only going to be one channel. Correct. What happens to the other channels? You cannot, the governments are not able to regulate the OTT channels. There is no Do you think government. enterprises coming together will create something, will have some regulations, maybe from the regulator side or? So, yeah, we have to try it out. Yeah. Educate then, them. Yeah, so we, yeah. see, they also know what happens. Right. The enterprises don't know. Ultimately, they go, go after the commercial. Correct. And when there is large scale fraud happens, then they go here and then as to how do I stop it? How do I safeguard Correct. myself? So, 
the enterprise, the consumer, the consumer safety is the most important. Right. Enterprise and the channel, I would just, I would not say telco, I would say the channel, channel. which is being used has right. to work together. How do they safeguard the consumers? I think that's the key to uh, build trust in the so, channel. So this is like we know because we are based in India, we know the market is huge. I think similar cases in Indonesia as well. And then must be aware, like, if you would like to throw some highlights from Indonesian market, because that market is also one of the largest market for enterprises. So how do you feel? Like, what are the challenges over there? Yeah. So uh, as we all know that uh, the A2P uh, rate, uh, Indonesia is known for the highest A2P rate, uh, termination international rate. So it started with, as Shalini mentioned, the commercial model. Initially, it was available at as low as one cent. Then it grew to, you know, two then two and a half, seven, eight, and then now it's at 23, yeah. <laughs> so uh, the commercial model also plays important role here, as uh, she mentioned rightly, because the enterprises and OTTs, they are now looking for alternate channels for the uh, authentication traffic, right? That's how you see the emerging trend of OTTs or uh, other uh, messaging, business messaging apps to, uh, you know, send your transactional utility marketing related messages. So tel telecoms will being the leading operator in uh, in Indonesia, and uh, the penetration mobile penet penetration rate we are, we are seeing as high as you know almost one thirty percent. But again, this is from the international perspective. But uh, are you facing the similar challenges like India in domestic market of Indonesia? Yeah. So for domestic, as uh, uh, Shikha mentioned, in India we have DLT, right? So in Indonesia. You know, it's not very easy to implement that technology because you need to have support from all the MNOs. They should reach out to the regulator and get this implemented. So definitely there's a challenge and uh, we need to come together. All the MNOs have to come together okay. and approach the regulator yeah. to implement such kind of technology there. Okay, that's good. That's yeah. Good. So um, what are some best practices for implementing security measures in messaging system? Like. I think you have already started something on this part, so you can put some highlights over there. Sure. Coming to that, uh, as you asked in the previous question, what are the emerging trends that we see, you know, or a threat uh, for the messaging? So as we all know that the global A2P market is uh, closer to 66 billion worldwide, and over the decade, uh, MNOs have been, you know, recording this kind of revenue. And with that, uh, the highest revenue, uh, I would say closer to 60% is generated out of authentication, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Because we see more and more uh, consumers are moving towards digital solutions like post-pandemic, right? Everyone, you know, has access to all the apps. That's how the authentication traffic is increasing. And with that, we see emergence of flash call, which is like a right. free rider or MNOs free, network, yeah. yeah. So that is a new area of, of concern for MNOs. So how do we uh, combat with that? So best uh, practice, I would say, is to implement flash, uh, flash call mitigation solution. So a lot of uh, uh, companies, I would say, they are still uh, you know, uh, doing research on how do we uh, do this. Right. So first, we need to identify if it is a flash call. You know, different types of algorithms can be built. Then uh, identify, uh, then, then we can uh, block it. If we find, let's say, repeat A numbers, we are getting the calls. Or static or dynamic algorithms can be uh, implemented. Right. And then we can take the right action. The MNOs can take the right action in terms of blocking or allowing the call to pass, right? So flash call is the one more emerging threat, I will say, for the messaging ecosystem, we can say. Because messaging business, it's, it's, it's a commercial business, right? But this kind of things are deteriorating the growth. Or maybe I think uh, TechLab has developed some solution on this. Kunal, if you have something to say. Uh, yes, we have developed the flash call mitigation and active blocking solution. Works on real time and purely on the signaling side. Uh, we are talking about threat of flash call, uh, as uh, Shalini highlighted, because of the flash call. Uh, I'm sorry, Shika highlighted. Nayan. Nayan, Nayan, Nayan I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, as she highlighted that uh, because of the increase in flash call, the SMSs, volumes are dropping and the revenues are losing. I think that's just the business aspect of it, but when you come on the technological aspect of it, uh, we see the f uh, there are people who receive a missed call and their bank account gets empty. There was a very classical case few months back here in India. Yes. The typical missed call was essentially a flash call and uh, the transaction was authenticated automatically. 
So it's it is a serious threat. Uh, apart from business side, it is a very serious threat on the consumer side as well, which has to be right. actively mitigated. Uh, so whenever this kind of a solution is uh, opted by a telco for an implementation, the focus should not be on monetizing it, but protecting their customers. Got it, got it. Any highlights? Just there? to uh, elaborate a bit on the mitigation uh, solutions. Uh, you know, we'll, telcos today are living rather, surviving in a world where uh, retaining a customer is a lot easier, a lot cheaper than acquiring a new customer. Correct. So just to add a European angle to it, since I am representing Orange, uh, according to Europol cybersecurity data, last year in 2022, telcos lost close to $10.6 billion uh, just from uh, the security leaks. Correct. So in such scenarios, it's very important for the regulator to step in and to ensure that the customers don't lose faith in the services. Uh, one of the biggest uh, agri uh, originators for uh, for SMS is the payment cards industry. Right. So um, uh, in the EU, uh, it is mandatory for us to comply with the standards set by PCI, DSS, and uh, GDPR. Right. Uh, of course, in Orange, that's being followed as well. And then coming to the operator side, uh, can uh, combat uh, security looks according to the regulation set uh, set by the regulator. Um, we encourage uh, two-step authentication always. Uh, and apart from that, regular security audits are also done, wherein uh, we set up a test environment with uh, sample uh, SIMs, and we try to identify the leaks in our network. So all these things combined, I mean, uh, they go a long way for the customer to feel safe and to continue with this technology. Because at the end, consumers are the, the one who is, you know, getting affected with this. Exactly. And Overall, if we really see uh, the messaging business itself, I just read some uh, reports last uh, day before yesterday. It is 64 billion USD by 2028, which is big chunk. And if we don't secure or don't protect it from now itself, it's gonna be hamper for sure. Yeah, and since Nayan mentioned the new kid on the block flash calls, I mean, I was really surprised to learn that uh, this year, in our own network in Europe and Africa, flash call already constitutes to about four to eight percent of the total international traffic. And, and it's that. increasing, right? It's increasing, and the most worrying thing is that we're not monetizing it. Right. Either we stop it or we monetize it. Right. We can't just let it. We so can't let it be a free rider. Billing mechanism, so it's a missed call. Exactly. Yeah. So there has to be first. It has to be mitigated, or there is a way to monetize it. Monetize it. So that you know people stop <laughs> doing this flash calling. But have you been discussing the ways to monetize it, like a separate trunk or...? There are, there are ways available, as you suggested, separate trunk to be created. Are there successful cases? On not yet, no. not yet. So we at Telin, I mean, uh, we have taken an initiative like uh, to create trust and transparency. Uh, so we have launched New Traffic. It's a public digital connectivity exchange, as I mentioned, for voice it to be virtual numbers. And it's one of its kind wherein uh, it's you... Uh, uh, the MNOs can uh, go for software-defined interconnects. Within within clicks, the interconnect is live. And uh, the we, we know that where the traffic is being routed to. Like Shekha mentioned, third party, where we don't know who's the end supplier. But here in, in, the, in the marketplace, the powerful market view, you can actually see who is the seller selling that particular route. Right. And, uh, and we encourage buying from direct on the platform. And as you mentioned, there we are uh, testing this feature, uh, flash call billing. So not yet implemented. It's still in testing phase. Good. So um, overall, what we discussed is about messaging security. What are the threats out there? How do we combat? So in just to um, conclude on this panel, and thank you for sharing all the insights from various markets, domestic, international, India, Indonesia, I'll say, from Europe. So. Um, as Kunal mentioned, we really need to focus on the entire ecosystem. So ecosystem is consumed with, let's say, uh, consumer, enterprise, operators, and regulators. So we should have all the checkpoints, uh, let's say, from regulator side, there should be right regulations for the country and consortium to be made for this. From operator side, right security solutions to be implemented. From enterprise side, I believe they should also do something to protect their consumers because they are the one who is paying for it, as well as they are the one whose consumer base is going to use it, right? And from the consumer perspective, it's the security and trust is very, very important. So we do have good panels coming in 
after this on authentication, on personal identity, and we'll learn from that most of the most of the parts. And I think um, thanks to James for giving those. Okay, Alex, you would like to add something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would just like to uh, to point out that uh, that's absolutely. That's absolutely correct, and I think the one of the problems we have to think of that protecting the consumers from the operator's side, yes. uh, and this is the very right thing to do. And uh, the regulators, I think, they have all the uh, doing the right steps to uh, to do that. But you think to uh, when you you know implementing those uh, those regulations, you have to think on what is and uh, how does it influence the global market and the global, uh, the global enterprises. Correct. Because it definitely, a lot of the local regulations, they make it much more complicated mm -hmm. and just, you know, kills the, the, the AGP SMS. Right. And that's pushing them to uh, look for more, uh, for more, you know, general, generic, uh, and easy, easy to use channels. So we shouldn't forget about this. Though, of course, protecting the consumers is the interest first thing to do. Yeah. Good, I think that's... The last thing I would like to add, as we, uh, the first question uh, that you are, uh, asked is how trusted is, uh, are the various messaging channels? So we know that SMS has been one of the key uh, you know, channels, wherein very basic handset can also support SMS, right? right. And the kind of power bestowed upon MNOs uh, as they do KYC for the consumers, it is still considered to be one of the trusted channels. And uh, with that, uh, I would say it is very important for us to follow the best practices Correct. So in order to protect the revenue. The thing, yeah. which, which and the mobile number which is being used uh, linked to the various OTT or uh, business messaging apps mm -hmm. should be, uh, you know, uh, taken under regulatory umbrella. Because as Shekha mentioned, there's no way to, you know, track. Yeah, because so even if you have regulators, they can't really do anything about it. Correct. They can just. What we are talking about is only telecom operators. Correct. Correct. But what about the other channels? Right? Correct. Or do you regulate them? Right. We are moving to a different uh, channel because of reasons which may be commercial or regulation might be very difficult. But right. ultimately, you have to regulate them also. The largest, I think, education which is required if you're talking about flash calls and things like that, when you have an Android phone and you're blindly giving consent to them to read. Right. How does the flash call work? Because the consumer doesn't understand what he's doing. Correct. So a lot of education is required on that st stand also because they should know what they're signing up for. Correct. If they are giving access to their phone book to read what is what call is coming, then what security is there? So if he's talking about uh, financial fraud which happened due to flash call, that's right. a pretty serious thing. Yeah, serious right. concern. Education Correct. is very very important. Very important. To the user. And if the governments globally can do something about stopping this from an Android perspective, I think right. that's something which needs to be looked into. Correct. So I think we need more these kind of forums to educate others and you know market it and everything. So MEF, GSMA, as you mentioned already. So this will spread the awareness. We meet in various events. You know, instead of just discussing about the business, it's better to discuss about the challenges out there and how we can combat them. I think that's that's the major takeaway from this. Forum. So um, thank you so much to the all panelists and thank you audience for listening to us. It was great. And we look, look forward to more such. Uh, yeah. uh, Pallavi, thank you very much. Now before we have a, a ceremonial photo taken of all the speakers, has anybody got any questions or any comments about the topic? Rajiv? Yeah, <laughs> yeah thanks. thanks James. So, like being a techie, like we were discussing about uh, like uh, the security, the anti-fraud, and then we were discussing about the artificial generation, and then we were discussing about the flash calls. So, we discussed like we, we need to mitigate flash calls, we need to monetize flash calls, so there are different options that are available. So, like are we not thinking what is the reason that why those flash calls are coming up? What is prompting the OTTs to get to those flash calls, is it only the prices or they are just looking for alternatives to those OTPs? So I can answer that question. So it's not, it's pricing is one of the factors, which is very important for say, because there is no, the cost for a flash call is predominantly actually nothing, right? So they are blending the flash calls or they're trying to create a price which is affordable and giving to the enterprise. 
but uh, security aspect of a flash call is important and how many of it's automatically you know authenticated but it works on only one kind of handset which is the majority for countries like india of course but uh, technology point of view there is a need to be a solution has to be there but i think it's more more from an education and a regulation perspective because i think it's it's a privacy issue so you're infringing on the privacy of the user you're reading whatever is in the phone which is very wrong and we've also got a question from chris almeida over here chris partly a comment uh, everything that was talked about today, I've heard this being talked about for the last five years. Uh, new ones have been flash call and fake delivery, fake DLR, increasing prices. Uh, why does fake happen? The MNO also enjoys it. The MNO also likes those bids to go from. He's very clear that if there are 10 million messages and somebody's bidding for 15 million, he's accepting it. So this is the whole ecosystem. I wonder who's to blame, who's the culprit. Is fraud by fraudsters? Are all players part of that fraud? But one point that was mentioned and I'd like to really highlight, regulation is important, but 210 countries trying to do regulation, not in my lifetime. But I believe associations like MEF, like GSMA, can play a major education and advisory role. So this is the message, James, over to you. Uh, Chris, we're going to have to finish this panel very soon, but I would have to say that MEF, at MEF, we have the Business SMS Code of Conduct, which is a start. And I run the Fraud and Revenue Assurance Working Group. It's very similar in what it does to the GSMA FASG Fraud and Security Group. But we have this Business SMS Code of Conduct, which about just short of 50 MEF members have signed. Now we have 200 MEF members, and the majority of those are in the world of messaging. So my question out there is, why is it that so few MEF members have signed up to the Business SMS Code of Conduct? The code simply says that the signatory is doing all it can to protect the ecosystem. It doesn't guarantee they will never carry a spam message on their network, because after all, you are aggregating traffic from so many different players and people around the world. No company, it doesn't matter whether you're a GTS or Infobip or Cinch or PCCW Global or anyone in this room, no one can guarantee we will never carry a spam message or a fraudulent message. It's, it's, uh, it's illogical to give that guarantee, the way the fraud situation is. But we have that collaborative platform at MEF. We have the business SMS code of conduct, which is expression of collaboration and people getting together. And that is being reviewed because of things like A to P flash calling, which first came to our attention in October 2021. So flash calling is not new. It's something that's been around for quite a long time. I also happen to run the commercial models working group at MEF. And I can tell you the commercial oh, like that where the commercial model is out of line with others in the region or in neighboring countries or whatever it might be, then you just happen to miraculously see higher incidences and in usage of A to P voice flash calling and higher incidences of fraud. It's that simple. Commercial model out of sync equals more fraud. It's that simple, period. So if you go to Sweden, I'm gonna be running an event there in a month they don't have much A to P voice flash calling because the commercial model there for SMS is very stable amongst the, the operators. There haven't been that many changes, for example. That's a fact. So that's where we are. But anyway, we've got to end this panel now. Pallavi, thank you very much. Thanks to all the speakers.